Hey, this is Jason with 4W Knives. Uh, I'm gonna do another project today. I had a request to do a QMI. I haven't done one yet. Uh, I've watched some videos. I've uh, done some reading. I think I have the concept down, uh, but it's gonna be kind of experimental. Uh, so what QMI is, uh, is blending in copper into your stack. Uh, generally a gomai is five layers. So you'd have an outside uh, layer, two outside layers, two inside, and then one core. Uh, well, QMI is a gomai with copper. Uh, it has a pretty cool look to it, unique. Not very many people uh, can make these. Uh, the process is a little different. It's, it's not really forge welding because I, I don't believe they can be forge welded. It's almost, uh, I would compare it as kind of combining uh, the two metals, being the copper and the, uh, the outside steel, whatever you're using. In this case, I'm using Damascus. Uh, I think it's 45 layer, 15M20, and 1075. Uh, so it's going to go something like this if it all works. Uh, Damascus, copper, uh, 1084 is what I have, copper, and then an outside of Damascus. Of course, I've got to get them all cleaned up on the grinder. I'm not going to uh, show all that. Uh, I'll show you right before I piece it together, and I'll, I'll probably do a little bit of explanation of the process, uh, but I am not educated in it enough to give you a full tutorial. Uh, there are some much better videos out there. I can think of uh, uh, Tyrell Knife Works is one that I watched uh, along with, uh, I think it's called Alley Knives. Um, those two were, were great tutorials that, that showed a lot. Uh, and there were some others. Uh, I'm horrible on remembering these things. But anywho, uh, this is what I'm going to be trying. If it gets big enough, I'm going to make a funky looking dagger that was requested. Um, and it, it, it in itself is going to be a challenge, let alone doing a QMI uh, with it. Uh, I'm not positive if I'm going to be able to get enough out of it, but this is what I had. Uh, the stack is five inches by an inch and a half wide. And I think, I think it came out to like 0.59 or something like that. Yeah. So just a little over half an inch uh, thick. I think I can stretch it out to about 11 inches. Being a, a dagger, I'll do a, a hidden tang, so I'm able to make that work, maybe. So, so we'll have to wait and see on that. <clears throat> all right, thought I'd show a quick uh, pick of this. I've got it all cleaned up. The outside of the mask just didn't matter, but the inside's clean. Uh, I've got it squared up. I went ahead and ground the uh, sides of it to where it was all matching. Only thing left to do is I'm gonna weld a, a little handle and then I'm gonna go ahead, once I attack it, I'm gonna cut this off so it, it matches. You can see it's not exactly uh, lined up and I want it to be perfectly matched. Um, my dilemma is whether or not to completely close this off or not. Most of the videos I watched, they do some type of way of sealing this billet. They either weld the seams or they put a, another piece of metal here and and get it to where uh, if this copper gets too hot, it doesn't squirt out. We did see a couple of videos where they just didn't get it that hot. I don't weld really good with my MIG. I've had, did some stainless steel, uh, San Mai, that I couldn't get it sealed. I had to send it to a, a welder that was much better than myself to get it sealed. So. I'm thinking if I go ahead and weld this up, it may not work anyways, and then uh, I'll be that much more work into it. I hate to take the chance to waste the Damascus, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to do it and just heat it up slowly. Uh, next pick you'll see, or next video clip you'll see will be uh, me heating it up, and my plan is to heat it up slowly, uh, press it, heat it up a little bit more and just try to keep it around that 1600 to 1700 degrees. My understanding is that uh, you get above 1900, that's when you get into trouble. I have no temperature control on my forge, so uh, it's just gonna be by me looking at it and guessing and hoping.
on the forge weld after this one, uh, I think things may have gone badly. Uh, my first press on the next heat, I believe a whole bunch of the copper came squirting out, scared me to death. Uh, don't know how much damage is done, but here we go. Watch it. Ah, scared me. I may have said a bad word. Don't know. I decided to keep going even after that. I, I don't know how much damage is done to it, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and press it a few more times, and then uh, I'm going to run it on the roller mill and get it down. I'm going to guess about a quarter, uh, and we'll go from there. Uh, Next video after the uh, roller mill, I'll grind it down and try to look at the edge and see see what I got. Maybe a completely waste of time. I don't really know. I'm pretty sure what went wrong is the tip or the, uh, the part opposite of the handle was deeper into the forge where it was probably getting to a higher temperature quicker. Uh, that's probably what's going to be our downfall. But... Uh, We'll see. If this doesn't work, then I'll go back to the drawing board and probably go ahead and weld some type of uh, side and end on it to keep it from popping. All right, first thing you're gonna notice, not a funky dagger shape. Uh, I ended up having to cut the ends off and didn't have a wide enough to do the dagger. So I ended up just doing a skinner. I, it's kind of like I've going little phases, but this is what I've been making more of lately. Uh, I'm not sure, this part I've never really figured out how to get it there. But maybe if you look real close, I think right there you might be able to see it. Uh, you can see the copper, a uh, little bit of Damascus on the outside, copper, and then the, uh, what was it, 1084 core. Uh, I think it's gonna work. Uh, I'm gonna put some grinds on it. I'll show a little bit of that. Uh, this this uh, video is running a little bit long, uh, but I'll, I'll show as much of it as I can to fit it within that 15 minutes that, that YouTube wants. Uh, so I'll, I'll go from there. So, so far, mild success. All right, um, I went ahead and drilled the uh, pinholes. Um, I kind of keep forgetting to turn the camera on on some of these things. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to do a surface grind, which I don't have a surface grinder. I've just got a flat platen. So I'm gonna put it on there. It's pretty thick. But looking at it, I'm kind of afraid to remove too much of the outer layer of that Damascus. I'm afraid it may disappear. So uh, I'm, I'm probably gonna leave it a rougher look uh, up top and, and in this area uh, because I'm gonna end up doing a flat grind. Okay, once I get it ground on the flat plat and, and get uh, the majority of the big scratches and imperfections out I'll draw a center line on the edge and using the file guide I will put a 45 degree edge on the blade itself uh, working it all the way down to the center line and then I will work my way towards the spine of the knife to give it a flat grind um, this process has helped me greatly improve the uh, beveling on my knives.
but it is still storming out, uh, raining pretty hard. Um, I've got the rough grind done. Uh, it's gonna be ready for the heat treat process. Uh, right behind me here, I've got an old uh, heat treat oven that uh, a, a local uh, guy who's been really, really good to me uh, gave this to me and a bunch of other stuff whenever I first started out. I, I don't use it a lot because it's not thermostat controlled. It takes a long time to heat up. Uh, but with this, I'm afraid to get it above that uh, minimum 1500 or the critical uh, temp because I don't want any of this uh, copper to melt out. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on, uh, let it heat up, keep checking it uh, until it gets to the temp that I want and then I'll put the knife in. I won't show any of that, uh, but what I will be doing is critical temp, let it uh, cool down to room temp. I'll do that three times, get it up to critical temp and then I will uh, uh, quench it in the oil. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna show any of that uh, because it's gonna take a long time with this and just a lot of checking, so anyway. Okay, I had to show this out of the uh, quench. Uh, this to show how cool it's already showing the pattern. It's got a great Damascus pattern uh, and you can see the copper. It all looks like it held together at least through the quench part. It's straight. I'm excited. Uh, probably the most excited I've been in the process because it looks like it's going to work. Uh, I'll probably just jinx myself, but anyways, and you can see the copper, or at least I can. I don't know if you can see the copper on the uh, inside of the knife. That, that just looks cool to me. So I'm going to temper it uh, two cycles at 400, and then it should be ready to do my finished grinding. All right. And this is pre-etch, been hand sanded, buffed, cleaned. Um, I went ahead and put some clear fingernail polish on the copper. Uh, most of the people that I asked suggested to do that. Uh, one guy that I, I trust probably as much as any of them, I mean, he is next level, said he did not and that he doesn't do anything other than uh, change out his uh, etching afterwards. Uh, said you didn't have to do it, but I was afraid that maybe my, my acid may be stronger uh, than his and cause damage. And I've done too much work on this, so I don't want to take a chance of losing it. So I'm just being a little bit cautious. So hopefully it doesn't screw it up. Uh, you will have to wait until I get a handle on this to see the final uh, pattern. Okay, here's my finished Damascus Kumai Hunter. Uh, we went with buffalo horn for the scales. Uh, beautiful material, pretty easy to work with other than it does stink a little bit. Uh, pretty happy with this one. Thought it turned out well. Um, a few things, obviously, that I'd like to have done differently. Uh, always hoping to get a little bit better as I go. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to make a few more. Keep trying to get better. Uh, like and subscribe, that'd, that'd be appreciated. Maybe uh, get a few more views. Thank you.